So question seven then from the 2022 Advanced Tire Paper 14114. It's a 10 mark question. Integrations. First part for four marks. Use the substitution. Well, that means it's integration by substitution. Use the substitution u equals y squared plus one or otherwise to find the exact value of this definite integral. Well, the first step is just going to be du by dy equals 2y. And there you've got a choice of which you're going to change it into. I usually go for the dy, so I get an explicit substitution here. And then I can figure out if there's any bits left over. That helps when there's more complicated ones. But you could also, which is what I'll do this time, just go for the du equals 2y dy, which you could have jumped straight in with, because as soon as you start to write that, you can think, well, rather than put the dy underneath, I'll just leave it till later and pop it in at the end. Now, doing that gets the first mark. Now, you could then carry out your substitutions, so everything is now a u, and carry out the integration, find a result, and then by using this substitution, go back to y again, and use the 0 and 5, those limits to evaluate it. But that'd be an awful long way around. If it wasn't a definite integral, if it was an indefinite integral with no limits in it, then that's what you would have to do. You'd have to change it into u, integrate it, get a result in u, and then go back to this and change it back all into y again. But we don't need to do that here because it's a definite integral, so we'll change those limits as well. So, when y is 0, the lower limit, that means u is going to be 0 squared plus 1, so that's just 1. And when y is 5, the upper limit, that means u is going to be 5 squared plus 1. So it's 25 and 1 is 26. Now we're ready to go. So that means it's good. I'm going to do the integral from 1 to 26 instead of... Now, instead of dy, it's going to be a du. Now, just getting as far as that actually gets you the next mark. That means finding the new limits, which normally would have been the next mark on its own, but starting it off to show that it's all going to go into u's. Now, but now you're going to have to search. I can only put du down if I can find a 2y dy. Well, it's in there. 4y is actually 2 times a 2y dy. So the 2y come out leaves a 2. Now, that's what I mean about um, the cancellation method. Saves you having to just do all of that in your head. Because if you've written du over 2y, then the y's just obviously cancel out the 2y, 2y. But nevertheless, over the square root of u. Now, completing it gets the next mark. But I'm going to save that until I get to the next line. 2 is a factor. It can come out. And u, square root of u underneath, can just be u to the negative of a half on top. du, I'll make that the third mark. But if you just leave it as 1 over root u, that's exactly the same thing. Now it's just a case of evaluate that. So, add 1 to the power. That's going to go back up to a half. Divide by the half is the same as multiply by 2. Well, I'll just put it inside just now. Evaluate from 1 to 26. Take the 2 out, because that's going to be a common factor of both calculations. 4 times square root of 26 first, square root of 1 after, and that's the last mark. So the otherwise then, well that would be to let u equal the whole of the denominator, the square root of y squared plus 1. Then as before, du by dy would be, now that's a function of a function, it's a chain rule, that's power a half. A half times that thing, take one of the power, negative a half, multiplied by the derivative of that inner part, 2y. I'll just rewrite that neatly. So du would be, these twos will cancel, leaving just a y on top. That's a square root underneath. y squared plus 1 dy. Very handy. Now the limits. When y is 0, that means u would be the square root of 0 squared plus 1, which is just 1. And when y is 5, u is going to be the square root, oh, it's a messy square root, the square root of 5 squared plus 1. That's 25 and 1 is 26. Root 26. Now we're ready to go, and most of it's just going to disappear, isn't it? In order to put a root a du down, I need to find these things and take them out. And that's just about everything that's there apart from that 4. So this would just turn into the integral from 1 
to root 26 of 4 du, because it's only the 4 that's left. I'll take the 4 out. That just leaves du. If you don't like a wee lonely du on its own, you could emphasise the fact that there's really a 1 there. So integrating that, it just pops back up to u. So it'll just be 4 u from 1 to root 26. So that'll be 4 root 26 minus 1 as before. Part B then, state the area of the cross section just for one mark so you have to read the part above. Now there's a little story here which I think is quite unnecessary at this level. It could just have said, relative to a suitable set of axes, the cross section of a solid is symmetrical about the y axis and is represented in the first quadrant by a curve with this equation. Now it just says state, so you could just write it down, but I'll set it out because if you want to find the area of this, then what you take is little rectangles, if it's the area to the y-axis, little rectangles that emanate from the y-axis, where the length of the rectangles would be the x-coordinates of the points, and the thickness of it would be as small as possible, the little dy's. And then the area would be the sum of all of those, the sum of all the x dy's from wherever to wherever. But it does say it's symmetrical about the y-axis, so it's not just that, You've also got a part over here, just to do it fairly approximately. Right, so what will I put down for that area? I'll put some working down, but you could just state it. So that area will obviously be twice the area in the first part, which goes from 0 to 5, of the x dy. I could write x dy, but since there's only one mark, I'll just go straight in with what x is. x is 4y over the square root of y squared plus 1 dy. And the reason it's only the one mark is you've already done that. That's what you did in part A. The answer to that is 4 root 26 minus 1. So I can just say the area is going to be 2 times 4 square root of 26 minus 1, which is 8 square root of 26 minus 1. Except an area this time, so units squared. And just having this part gets the mark no matter what else you did. Part C, just for the one mark here, seemingly just isolated little question, but obviously not, because it must have something to do with the flow of the question. Express this fraction in two parts. So it's presumably a whole part and a proper fraction. Of course, remembering from partial fractions, if you're looking to simplify a partial fractions, you need proper fractions. The degree of the top has to be less than the degree of the bottom, the degree being the powers involved. Well, this degree is the same, so it can divide in. So you've got two choices. You could divide it in by doing a long division, or you could manipulate it algebraically, which is just what I'll go for first. So if I want that to simplify, if I want that to divide in to make a whole number, I need to see that in top somewhere. So I'll manufacture it. I'll put y squared plus 1 in top. Now that's quite happy to go into that once. Except that's not right because there wasn't a 1 there, so I'll take the 1 off again. Now that I've got these two parts, that part will give me a whole number, that part will give me a fraction. I can just split the fraction now. So this part divides out to exactly 1, minus, and this part leaves my fraction. And that's the required result. Now, if it were more complicated than that, you could carry it along division. It's not really needed here. The long division technique would be you start with the denominator, y squared plus 1, and you divide it into the numerator. Now, I'll need to have all the parts here, all the powers, so there's no y to the power 1s, and there's no y to the power of zeros, which are the constants. So this can obviously just go in once. It only takes one times this to make that one lot of y squared. So it goes in once. Now that one is actually a constant, so I'm placing it there. Now multiply it out to see what the remainder is. Well, one times y squared is y squared. One times one is one, but that would go there. Subtract it to see what's left over. Zero take away one is minus one. 
So this says if you divide by y squared plus 1, it will go in exactly once, there it is, and you'll have a negative 1 left over. So you could write plus negative 1 over whatever you were dividing by, or neater than that, minus 1 over it. Part D then. The curve, the curve given here, will be rotated 2 pi radians about the y-axis. That'll form the solid then. You have to find the volume of that solid for four marks. Well, this little rectangle, which in the area formed the little rectangles that you added up, in terms of rotation will become a radius. Sweep that around and it'll form a little thin disk. Difficult to show it because I've got a different perspective there. It'll form a thin disk and the volume of a disk of that little thickness is the same as the volume of a very thin cylinder is pi r squared h. So that's what you're going to be adding up. The volume is going to be the summation of all these thin disks which read pi r squared h where r is the radius, that's the x coordinate, so x squared, and h is the thickness that's the dy. So I'll just write that neatly. So that means it's going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of x squared, which will be this squared, which is a 16y squared. Pop the 16 out. That'll be a y squared. Over squaring the bottom removes the square root over y squared plus 1 dy. Now, that gets the first mark. In fact, just writing this first part, I think, gets the first mark. Although they did have, in the Martin scheme, the integral, uh, the limits put in here. Now, this is where the previous part comes in. So that's actually 16 pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of the bit you got by doing the division. 1 minus 1 over y squared plus 1. And just by taking that answer down to here, you get the next mark. And of course the handy thing about that is, because it's all ready to go now, 1, oh, like a dy, will just go back up to y. And this you should recognise as inverse tan. And that's where you're going to get the next mark from. So that part goes up to y, but that goes to inverse tan. Inverse tan of y from 0 to 5. And in fact, just recognising that inverse tan on its own gets a mark, never mind writing it all out. The rest comes into finding the final answer. So you've got 16 pi times. Well, first of all, you've got 5 minus inverse tan of 5. Minus, and when it comes to trig functions, it always says, well, when you're putting zeros in, just writing it all out in case the answer isn't a zero. Minus 0 minus inverse tan of 0. Now, tan of 0 is 0, so the other way around takes you back to 0. So that does all disappear, which means your final answer will be 16 pi times 5 minus the inverse tan of 5 volume, whatever the units are, units cubed. There's the last mark.